question around the landscape, particularly of these devices in the country. And I'm joined by Vincent Onyango, who is a business manager at Salute iWorld this afternoon. Vincent, welcome to the program. Thank you very much, Jimmy. All right, so first things first, we were promised that the phones would cost about 4000 to 5000 Now, the actual prices are out. We're talking about 7500 give or take. What, what are your sentiments for somewhere in that space? Um, that was anticipated because of the different economies of scale, economic factors. One of them would be the factor of, the factor of to, to do with the dollar rates. Um, the dollar has gone. There's the devaluation of the Kenyan currency that has um, grown over the period of time, and uh, that was anticipated to happen. All right. Because initially, um, the phone was meant to retail at uh, about 40 USD. Mm -hmm. Yeah, currently it's about 60. They are all right, so just from where you sit, and of course being very active in this market, what, what, what are some of the things that you look at before introducing a product into this space? And when you look at uh, the phone that uh, we're currently launching, it's a, it's a very basic entry level, if you, if you might say. It's a very basic entry level kind of phone and kind of device. So what kind of clientele is it likely to attract? Um, the people in the tech industry. Because again, what the government is trying to, they're trying to bridge in uh, the gap of digital inclusion mm -hmm. and accessibility. So that's whatever the government is trying to promote with the introduction of the smartphones, affordable smartphone industry. All right, so maybe you can also just talk us through, uh, when you look at the adoption of some of these devices, uh, maybe in Kenya in comparison with our East African counterparts, and globally, how are we faring so far? Uh, so far, so good, because um, in terms of penetration of uh, smartphones in Kenya, it stands at about 60.2%. Um, generally, um, in the, if you go to the Apple ecosystem, we are at 85%. That is uh, both the regulated auto, uh, channels and also unregulated channels. Mm -hmm. So... Uh all right, just, just go ahead, because uh, the other thing that maybe I wanted you to also help us understand is some of the key drivers for growth. Key drivers for growth, uh, I can say about um, the ecosystem in terms of whatever government has given us at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, you look at um, the data, you look at uh, the ICT infrastructure that we have in place as a country, and also you look at now the vibrancy of the youthful population. Because um, the youth, there's high demand of uh, smart, uh, smartphone devices amongst the youth. And uh, currently, uh, about 75% of uh, the population in East Africa as, as a whole is below 35 years of age. Yeah. Now, there's a new concept that, uh, that is coming up, and this is actually one of the things that featured prominently in that launch, is the fact that uh, we are seeing a lot of retailers taking a buy now, pay later kind of approach. Is this beneficial? And for someone in that market, is this the way to go? Uh, it's very beneficial and it's the way to go because everyone is looking at affordability. Um, a case where you, you are able to stagger your payment within 12 months, mm -hmm. we will not go for that option. Okay. And particularly when you look at some of these young customers, again, when you look at a uh, developed market, particularly the US and the UK, they, there seems to be a lot of advancement where I have an iPhone 15, I get to, uh, iPhone 13 rather, I get to take it back, be given an iPhone 15. So are we likely to get there as a country or how far are we from where you, from, from just uh, what you're seeing as some of the uh, consumer trends? Uh, so far, we are the pioneer in that industry. Uh, we have a trading uh, options for our clientele. Let's say you have iPhone 14, you want to trade it off for iPhone 15. Mm -hmm. We've given you that opportunity through our trading partner called Notlada. You are able to, we, you come over with the phone, we are able to evaluate the value, then we give you the, the, the device that you want. Yeah. Yeah, so it's so already in the market. All right, and in terms of taste, again, uh, Kenyans have, have been known to, have, to be very peculiar in some aspect. There are those who will come and tell you, all I want in a device is something that works, is a device that allows me to do the basic functionalities. Yet, when you look at some of these high-end devices, it gives you more than the basic functionality. So when you look at the Kenyan consumer, what are you seeing as some of the things that they're really keen on some of these devices? Um, maybe I'll look at it holistically as a user experience. Mm -hmm. So user experience, I mean uh, data storage, because something like uh, an Apple, for instance, it gives you both the primary and secondary storage. Mm -hmm. um, we are looking at uh, support in terms of the support and warranty services. Uh, whereas most uh, smartphone comp companies will be able to give you up to 24 months, mm -hmm. Apple will give you up to five years, uh, five years warranty. 
So we also look at the camera quality. We also look at um, brand loyalty and reputation. That's something that Apple provides for you. Okay. So that's some of the, some of the, some of the things that we as the consumers look at. All right, so we've seen recently, of course, the, the thing that uh, everyone is talking about, that is the launch of iPhone 15. When you look at the Kenyan market, how is it likely to be received? Um, as mentioned, uh, or as alluded uh, by yourself, that uh, Kenyans are peculiar. So, of course, there is a rush to get the, to get the device, because mm -hmm. um, the rush is uh, propelled by the fact that everyone wants to own the device, who, want to, who, was, who, own, who owns their device first. So, so far, there's a rush to on the device. Uh, the queues are long at the stores, and uh, the phone keeps on ringing on inquiries. Okay. All right. Uh, just, just back to that story, there's the question of uh, now that uh, we have this product, we have this device that uh, uh, the mobile operators came together and decided that we're going to launch this to make sure that uh, we target the low-income earners. Now, in terms of return on investment, are, you, are they likely to make the, the amounts that they're looking for? And is it a business model that is going to work? It has uh, pros and cons. Uh, first of all, because um, I know even Safaricom, or be it the government, they will look at very many things. Mm -hmm. So they look at your credit, uh, credit score for you to be able to access this facility. So how many people are still listed within the CRB systems? So also the effects of the default rate, the insurance aspect of it. So there are very many things that entails on affordability okay. that the government will need to consider for that to come to a reality. All right, Vincent Onyango, thank you so much for sharing your sentiments. And of course, we'll be looking forward to just see how then the government is able to raise some of this revenue and whether the, the players in that space are going to make what they expect. Now, I want to take a quick commercial break, but when we come back, we'll be having a conversation around the Changamka Festival. The fifth edition is coming up. What is it about? Stay tuned. We'll be telling you what it's all about and what you can expect.